I once had a company that was really doing some great work, some impressive work, in fact. We had some large clients. Uh, we were really sailing along, uh, but we were starving for cash. I was out there talking to venture capitalists. I was pitching the company one after another. In fact, I had pitched more than 60 VCs, and there were no takers. But one thing you learn as an entrepreneur, if you are alive, it's pretty basic. If you're alive, you can keep your dream alive. Uh, so we continued to pitch uh, to VCs, and, and then I ran into Megabank. Megabank was a company that was very much interested in investing in companies like ours, and we gave them a pitch, and they responded positively. They really liked what we had to offer. I got a call one, um, one day after we had made our presentation to Megabank, and uh, it was John. It was John who said, I want to come over and... Uh, uh, introduce you to some of the folks that we work with at Megabank. As you know, we have a lot of great affiliates, and I want you to meet Bill. Bill is uh, with one of our affiliates. He wants to know what you guys are up to, and I want him to see the kind of investment that we're going to move forward on. We had uh, agreed, in fact, on a valuation, and Megabank was going to put $12 million into our company. And this was great because we had gone for a long time basically on ingenuity, angel investors, and cash flow. So now we were going to have some money. I said to John on the telephone, I said, this sounds great, but will Bill's assessment have anything to do with whether you move forward or not? John immediately responded, no, not at all. Are you kidding? Let me, let me explain something to you, Andre. At Megabank, we really have a philosophy you know, our money is different than other people's money. It's different than the money that's out there. We don't just invest. We bring all of our affiliates into the fold. In fact, what we like to do is give our investments a nice big bear hug. So I said, okay, fine. Uh, you know, come on over this Friday. That Friday, we were ready for them. We had uh, let our staff know that Megabank was coming in. Uh, my business partner, Mike, was in town, and uh, John and Bill showed up. We went into the conference room, and we sat down, and we began to talk about our company. Bill kicked it off by saying, Andre, tell us a little bit about your company. What do you, what do you guys do? And uh, I explained what we did. I explained uh, how long we had been in business, the kinds of clients we had. Bill listened carefully, and he said, that's interesting. You guys are profitable. Uh, that could mean that you've plateaued as a company. Maybe you're not going to have the kind of growth that we need as an investment. And I said, no, I think once we get the kind of investment capital that we need, we'll be able to invest in the things that will really make us grow. He said, hmm, okay. He started to look through some of the notes that I had provided to him. And he said, you know, your page views are not quite the kind of page views we'd like to see. Uh, in fact, they're a little bit under where we are typically investing these days. And I said, well, our page views are really more reflective of a very specialized market. Again, we haven't had the capital to, to really pump this out and let people know about what we're doing. But I think once we have that, we will be able to get those page views up. He said, hmm, okay. Um, I said, I don't know. He said, you know, what you've done here is impressive. You know, I looked at Mike and, and smiled, and he looked at, looked at me, and, we, and we, we felt pretty good because we knew we had done a lot of work. But Bill said, you know, I'm really troubled by, by some of these things here. Um, but, you know, it's not my investment. It's, it's, it's John's investment. So I think, it, I think it'll be fine. We left the conference room. And um, uh, Mike was showing um, Bill around the office, and John and I were in the corner, and I said to John, um, how did it go in there? You know, I, Bill didn't seem like he was too impressed with what we're doing. He says, don't worry about him. He just likes to show off. Listen, you're our guy. This is our company. This is our investment. We're really feeling good about this. He looked around the office and he said, uh, well, you know, how long is your lease in this place? I said, we've got a, another two years. He said, don't you worry. We're going to present this to the board on Monday, and I think we'll have a term sheet for you by midweek. It's really great to do business with you. We shook hands. John and Bill took off. Mike and I looked at each other. We exhaled. We said, wow, 
that was really tough. But uh, I think it went okay. Mike said, hey, let's grab something to eat. We went out, had lunch. While we were sitting down having lunch, we thought about the years that we had worked and how hard we had really worked as a company and how difficult it had been to build this company without capital. And I said to Mike, you know, in just a couple of weeks, we're going to have some real capital. What are you going to do? And Mike said, you know, it might be time to get that copy editor I wanted to get. And uh, he said, what about you? And I said, you know, it might be time to get that sales exec I wanted to get. And uh, Mike said, you know, we're talking like we're just going to get a few hundred dollars. We're going to get $12 million. In fact, we could get a whole team. We could get a whole, you know, a, a news gathering team. We can get a whole sales team. We're in great shape. And we laughed, and we really thought about how far we had come. I headed back to the office because I had work to do. Mike was on his way out of town. And when I got back to my desk, I sat down and uh, took a glance at the phone. The red light was on saying that I had a message. Picked it up, was about to make some calls, and I listened to the message, and it was John. And I thought, oh, this is him. He's telling us how great the meeting went this morning. I listened to the message, and he said, Andre, this is John. Um, we're not going to be able to do the deal. I'm really sorry about it. Um, I'll talk to you soon. And hung up the phone. I looked at the phone, and I was devastated. All of our dreams about what we could do with this investment were beginning to fly away. In fact, I had this nervous feeling. I instantly got back on the phone. I called John, and I tried to get through, and he wouldn't even pick up the phone. Uh, I sent an email, uh, and he, he didn't respond. Finally, I got him on the phone, and he said, look, we can't do the deal. We can't do the deal. Uh, he didn't give us any explanation. Well, time went on. A couple of weeks went by, and we kind of you know, were licking our wounds a bit. And we realized that what actually had happened is Megabank had decided to invest in another company, another company that was doing a similar thing to what we were doing, except they weren't making money. They were not organized. They were not focused. They didn't know the market like we did, but they were led by a legendary and visionary creative artist, someone who was in the film industry and who had been very successful at getting projects off the ground in the past. The only problem is a couple of weeks went by and that legendary filmmaker, that creative thinker, that company that was on a roll now with an investment from Megabank, that legendary filmmaker died. He died and the company at that point began to struggle. Time went on and the company ultimately filed bankruptcy. What's my point here? My point is that after that all happened, we had to decide to go back to our angel investors and ask them to invest in the company. We had to be more assertive and go out there in the marketplace and sell our services. We had to become more creative and market ourselves more assertively. We didn't get Megabank, even though Megabank would have made a big difference to our company. But we kept our dream alive. If you can keep your dream alive, if you can keep focused on what it is you need to do, you will be able to make it as an entrepreneur. Keep your dream alive.